Yeah, back to what I'm trying to show you here. So when a shelf is when a shelf is below eye level, the loose part will go on the bottom. You always fit the base first. For the upper shelves, the base will be the lipped part. For the lower shelves, the base will be the upper part, so that the seam is always out of sight. So it's like a little trick. You almost never see it, and it's discreet enough when you do see it that your eye just reads them as solid floating shelves. <coughs> and that is one reason why both top and bottom are 18 millimeters, because they're reversible on site and either part will receive the 25 millimeter screw. These modesty blocks, they're deliberately fitted a little bit up because um, when the screw tightens down, they still pull tight. One screw is enough. The good thing about having those modesty blocks with the two holes available for screwing down is sometimes you'll fit your base piece and you actually can't get the top quite tight, so that little seam doesn't quite go tight. Take the top off and re-trim it, but usually I've applied cork at that point, so what I usually do is just loosen, well take the screws off here, nudge it forward and put them into the other hole, because I don't want to have to fill that seam, um, because I just don't want to, I don't want to be overfitting the pre-sprayed finish at all. It looks tidiest, just left as a seam. As you can see, those top ones above eye level, the seams at the top, this one and everything below that, the seam will be at the bottom. For this last one, we've got an 80 millimeter cable outlet hole, which will have a white plastic cap in it. Uh, those are pre-drilled in both parts in the workshop. Uh, all these shelf parts, they're made 20 millimeters over and then trimmed back. So I've, I've trimmed that base piece to fit and then I've laid it on top of what will be the top piece. And I've just made sure that my holes line up and then I'll uh, I'll scribe around it to copy the shape. Final shelf now, and annoyingly I've got a bit over eager and just made those gaps bigger than I'd really like them to be. This is just like, just on the limit of acceptability. Um, not so bad that I'm gonna go remaking it. Now, of course this is with the pre-sprayed stuff is the stakes are quite high. And we have in the past um, brought spare shelves to site, but we just decided now it's better to just take a lot of care. Um, this back gap, this is unusual. I've had to trim some of them a little bit, but what I'm doing there, this this is sometimes the case with these, these shelves. It's allowed for in the design because the battens have a setback, a gap of about 10 millimeters. For that reason, so that if the shelf has to move back with a rear scribe, you don't have to go trimming those side battens down. A few final thoughts on this for the makers out there. So we've refined this process over the years. We used to hand paint, we used to roller paint things. Uh, we always had the ambition to give the customer a full service, so painted and everything. And we, we figured that painting in a was better. Uh, so we used to roller it on. When we, when we moved to spraying, it demanded a different approach. And that's why we added the Modesty Blocks secret fixing method. So there were no through fixings in our method. And we just accepted this. Theme, which I think works really well. Um, we do avoid any sort of overpainting. We can do it because it's a water-based paint and that's one reason why we chose that water-based paint. But as soon as you start touching up, like here I'm, I'm tempted to, because I did just nick it a little bit with the planer blade. Um, I probably ought to there really, just with a tiny paintbrush. But I just want to avoid any brush marks interfering with the flatness of the finish beyond that little touch up at the front edge there. A couple more things on this. I was averaging 34 minutes per shelf. That's including fitting the battens and shelves, corking, everything. That's an average I just worked out, excluding that first one, which I was spending longer over videoing. If I was handing this job to an installer, they would get all the parts that you saw um, packaged up and they would have a drawing like this. So alcove width marks at the top, um, but the parts are already sized just fine. And then running heights, or to the top of the baton. That's what we mark. So my process is to mark just little marks on the, the wall, um, offer the baton up and pin it at that mark, and then pivot around that to level it and then pin it some more. I would always use a laser 
to check any disparity in height and I found out that this floor was higher by 10 millimeters on this side so I was just adjusting my running measurements by that 10 millimeters so that they end up in line. I find that the easiest way to do that. Now if you've kept watching this far you're pretty hardcore so thank you. I'm going to let this story expire. I'm not going to put it as a highlight but I am going to screen record it and put it on my member site buymeacoffee.com slash freebird because people asked for this level of detail on there. Now bit of information just to pass over if you're still finding your feet with this sort of thing. Alcoves are often this kind of shape so then if you measure your front and cut to that shape and then drop it in at the angle and cut your shape off, scribe it off, okay. Sometimes they do splay back so whenever you measure you want to measure front and back just to check your measuring and cutting your initial piece to the maximum width but the thing to be aware of is occasionally they're like this could have the same measurement here as there and go ahead and cut your shelf only to find that yes you can scribe that but then you've got a big gap here so just watch out for that.